everybody, it's Tyler checking in here with team number 6800 of the Texas Cup with Viperbot's Valor. Uh, a great team here who's had a lot of strong performances. Also a 2020 Chairman's Award uh, win as well too. So we're going to be talking about uh, this robot going through, of course, on the uh, intake into a Spindexer, a shooter, a cool climber, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If your team or organization is hosting an off-season event, did you know you can stream it right here on FIRST Updates Now for free? Events that stream on First Updates Now receive an additional 25 to 100% additional viewership because we help you promote your event on a large platform. If you're interested, reach out to us on any of our social platforms, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com. Let's get your off-season event streaming on First Updates Now. Hurry, dates are booking fast, and we take first come, first serve for all our events. So starting off, I'm here with Andrew, and we're going to be uh, talking about the uh, intake on your robot here. So tell me a little bit more about it, and then we'll see a power cell going as well. So our intake is a pretty basic intake. It's retractable and deployable using these pneumatics. It's powered by a single Neo, a full-size Neo motor. So it has a ton of torque, uh, and it spins at a, a near one-to-one -one ratio, a little less than that. So we have a lot of speed, so we can uh, pick the balls in at high speeds, even when we're moving backwards. And we so can show you. Yeah, so talk to me about, a little bit about the simplicity too. So we'll pull it in first and I'd love to just hear more about what was your concept behind you know, doing that? Because there are some teams who have really complex ones, but you don't necessarily need a complex intake, right? Yeah, it's, it's worked really well, but uh, the simplicity is great for fixing things. Like this thing, it has two rollers on it. it one, neither of them are gonna break since we have this bar in front sure. of them. And then the only things that'll break are these, which are super easy to replace. So it really just puts a, a load point right on one thing and that lets us replace them super easily, makes the lift for, uh, intake super reliable. Well, I'll tell you, before we bring in a power cell, let's actually uh, go over and talk about the Spindexer uh, first on this. And we're gonna bring in uh, uh, Cooper, who's gonna be talking more about that. And uh, so we'll, we'll talk about the Spindexer, then we'll pull a power cell and see how that looks. Yeah, so our Spindexer, um, pretty simple after coming out of the intake. It's a 67 to one ratio on a Neo 550. Um, the entire Spindexer is attached with a single nut and washer, um, so it's pretty easy to take in and out, and it has some small dividers in the middle to help force balls into the throat sure. and the shooter mechanism. So one of the things to ask you on those, on those dividers there, we've been seeing uh, a lot of teams who do like the, the larger dividers have a lot of jamming issues with that as well too, right? So have you noticed that using those smaller ones, you're seeing a little bit less of that? Yeah, so we actually have some software to assist with that, but with smaller dividers, we find that balls don't get pushed up inside of our throat too early, and they are allowed to you know, flow around a little easier. Um, with our software on the software side, we actually run, we call it anti-jam code, which is basically just tracking voltage spikes in our Neo 550 motor. Sure. So whenever voltage spikes for a certain amount of time, we'll run our Spinexer backwards to help unjam before it gets too serious. Makes sense. Can we let's see a couple power cells go in and just kind of see how that process works? Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah. So right there, that's that anti-jam part. Yeah, the little wish wash. Motion yeah, no, that makes a, makes a lot of sense. Almost kind of like a washing machine, right? A little yeah, bit yeah. on how that works on there. Uh, very cool. So uh, Alejandro, we're going to be talking about the uh, shooter uh, going into that. So tell me a little bit more what the shooter is. I'm always love hearing about what teams use for their flywheels and why they go that route too. Right. So uh, leading up from the Spindexer, we have a, our throat mechanism, which is powered by two Neo 550 motors, and that's really helpful to let the balls slide past and. Uh, when we do want to start shooting, we can send them directly up. And so leading into the turret, we used a around 80 to 1 gear reduction, and we had custom manufactured our large gears out of polycarb and 3D printed some other um, sorry, gears. Um, and that really helps with the customization and allowed us to stay cheap and make large bearings that really allowed our turret design to take off. So leading up to the flywheel, we have two large neoprene rollers at four inches in diameter and two inches thick, so a total of four inches. And then in order to add increased rotational inertia, we 
we created these brass flyweights. Sure. Um, and then these are all powered by two full-size Neo motors at a one-to-one -one gear reduction. So you guys have the, uh, the this upper roller right here as well too. Is this uh, also being powered? Does that help that out as well? Right. So in order to decrease the amount of backspin we get on our shots, we chained another belt across with uh, to our hood, and there's a, a gear to help reverse the direction um, of our top roller, and that sends it out. Makes sense there. So uh, we're going to mm -hmm. be going back over to Cooper. He's going to be uh, going through a couple of the electronics uh, on the road that we didn't mention. I uh, always love teams that use some of the feedback uh, as well, too, from the lighting. Uh, but tell us about anything else that we might be missing, too. Yeah, so on the electronics side, we actually decided this year to uh, revamp our electronics panel. Sure. And we basically attached all of our PDP, Robo Rio, Spark Maxes, everything, um, to a modular panel that comes in and out of the robot. And then we have custom, some custom, some stock, de like, detachment, like, plugs that it allows to basically take out the whole brain of the robot. And we can test motors, anything we want, separately while hardware works on the robot. And then we also have these LED, this little LED strip um, on the side, which shows us when our, when our shooter's spooled. So actually, if you want to go for it, Andrew, you'll see it changes from red to blue once our shooter gets up to speed. And that's about all that we did special for robot or yeah. electronics. But that's a quick speed up, by the way, too. We didn't really talk about how quick that did that. And so it's cool to see just how quickly uh, yeah. that was able to speed up for you guys. So absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's wrap up here uh, with uh, Andrew, who's going to be talking about the climber uh, on this robot. Uh, nice large climber. Looks like multi-stage as well, too. So tell me a little bit more about that. So the climber, we had to go with a four-stage design so we could fit under the trench, which is a crucial design sure. uh, point for us. So th this one is a little special. So instead of using uh, two spools and two gearboxes per side, which is how most teams do it, that would double the weight. Uh, we have one gearbox and one spool, which we can show you by taking this out. So there's like, one continuous string that actually pulls down both sides of the lift. So we have a fixed point uh, on that side, and it runs up uh, over the top of this lift, down uh, across the whole robot. You can see both strings here, and it runs up this other side, down, uh, and then onto the single spool. And that single, sp uh, that whole design allows our uh, lift to be uh, additive in a sense that we can rock and pivot. Uh, so you can see the strings moving under there. So our lift, even when the power switch is angled, we can be on it uh, at an angle. Like this, as it rotates, sure. we always stay okay, on, that makes sense. and yeah. you can still climb up straight. And so some teams we see twisting their lift a lot, or really hard when they try to lift at the same speed. So ours, it doesn't matter what speed we lift, or what, yeah. which side we lift at, that can still go up perfectly straight. That's a cool thought process behind that. I appreciate you telling us about that. Well, 6800, thanks a lot uh, for taking the time to tell us about your robot and what's been going on uh, for this really cool stuff going on, and wish you best of luck here at Texas Cup, and of course in, in uh, future competition season as well. So good luck, guys, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.